what I saw here, it has enlarged my thinking, my thoughts, my imagination. I just uh, didn't stay here. I, I think that I used to live here for one week. The, the whole experience was very, very full, very rich. It's been a quite uh, unexpected and deeply engaging unfolding of being here. Every day, you know, you, you, you wake up and what's, what's in store today and, and just getting to know, to know the island, these beautiful places, like the Nagakusu Castle. Incredible scenery, incredible vistas. And yeah, this, this idea of both oceans, one ocean to the side, the other ocean to, to, to another, it's, uh, yeah, fantastic. I can feel something in the air. It reminds me a bit of um, Sri Lanka, where I've been a bit. There's a softness here, and there's obviously also, this is bringing what I know about the place, a combination of intense beauty and peacefulness. It feels like quite a, a kind of spiritual centeredness with a great deal of uh, violence and trauma interfused with that. The strong impression it's left is of this, uh, of like both ends of the continuum of historical time coexisting. Um, a kind of timeless present of, of a continuous culture and the very specifically modern configuration of geopolitics and territorial possession um, and uh, military hardware that is also present here and these two things these two lives being lived in parallel uh, but you know with no distance between them with the American military presence that you're very aware of a lot of the time with military uh, aircraft going overhead. Um, you feel some of the kind of wiring of the contemporary world is exposed here. Like you see, you see the mechanics of like geopolitics in a very raw way. This is the most beautiful bullet hole. Alone is, is, uh, is a novel. You know, it's uh, a short story, if you like. You see how, how life can comes out of death? It's very impressive. I have uh, seen that in Palestine. When I went to my mother's village, the village was burned in 1948. But when I went back, I saw olive trees, half of them burn, and the other half is green. Meaning that there is hope. Meaning that there is still hope. And there is still life coming out of, 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 of destruction. Which means life is stronger than death. Life is very much stronger than death.
Kudak Island is something quite otherworldly, like this intense peace and calm that just emanates from 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 that place is is really something um, I felt extremely at peace there. Um, yeah, guided as we were by that that uh, gentle old lady, she she got. On the rock, started you know waving and come, 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 something you know singing or, or speaking to the to the animals. And at a certain point, just a turtle, you know, with her, with its head, um, breaks the, the the surface of the ocean, and it's just beautiful. Kudaka touched me deep when uh, the shaman took us to, and she showed us where the first gods arrived. And uh, we also prayed for those gods. There was something special about this island. Uh, don't tell me what was it. Uh, okay, I could write about it, but it, it, it is something you feel it in the heart. And I felt like, quitting everything in my Malta and becoming the 175th resident on this island. The ocean is not a place to swim actually, but the ocean uh, is uh, a kind of spiritual and metaphysical place. It is uh, just to see it and to cope with your inner being and uh, to think about the past because the ocean, uh, it is a kind of metaphor of the past but also of the present and of the, of the future for me. The meeting with the real shaman was uh, very, very precious uh, because uh, I had also uh, the opportunity to speak uh, with, uh, with her, uh, to learn something new and uh, that I mostly like uh, at the, the island Kudaka is our experience to pray together with her. Pray uh, with the shaman together for all our lives and for the all human beings in, uh, in the world. So for me it was uh, something very, very precious. The shaman who showed us around explained very early on that there were sites where they have for thousands of years been praying for the well-being of all the males on the planet and also in other sites all of the females. So um, she said herself, you know, you think you have no connection to this place, but actually we've been praying uh, for you since before you were born. Um, so it's an extraordinarily particular place, but it, it understands itself to be absolutely at the heart of, of, a, of a really uh, global consciousness. The quality of the natural world here um, is very useful. Um, I suddenly saw what Terence Malick had caught in the thin red line, you know, this kind of this natural world that is very lush and peaceful and it feels almost asleep. It's like in its own dream. And then passing through that and overlaid on it is this very uh, kind of kinetic, violent human uh, conflict. And those two things together feel very present here. Um, and that's, that's very like informing of what the, uh, the kind of life world of that experience of conflict in these places is like. Okinawa City, the Kaza district, is that how you say? And then the, 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 the main street, it's like, 
again, another experience hard to put into words. It, it, I said it was like a David Lynch movie, you know, it was incredibly, impossibly surreal. You know, you, you, we go there and we see two Sanchin players and the lady on the drums, and this was just funny, endearing, charming, surreal, strange, you know. Somehow I feel I am home. I'm home because of the welcoming of people, because of the beautiful culture which is similar to our culture and uh, a little bit different from Tokyo's culture. So in a way I, I feel I am at home. And then, yeah, to see it, go to the next place and then see uh, the same band, two guitar players and a, and a drum, drum player performing these classical rock hits. And these are like Japanese guys with long hair, you know, doing the rock. covers were, were excellent, fantastic, you know, it's like where am I, in the middle of the ocean somewhere in the Far East and what is this, you know, it's just, yeah, I don't know, maybe I should travel more, but I, I have traveled some and, and stuff like this is, uh, you don't see it often. expecting uh, the, to see the American base uh, and I mean to be aware of the old planes and helicopters uh, but I was not aware of uh, of the real life of these soldiers when they are not in the base uh, so you know it is uh, in the same way uh, it is uh, pity to see them here and in the same way i am aware that they don't really want to be here Everything was so different, you know, then again, this sculpture garden of Minoru Kinjo when we got there, it's just like, you know, we were driving around, we, we couldn't find the place immediately and I got to see the villages and everything was, yeah, okay, I, it's villages, you know, houses, people, quite normal stuff and then come here, come here and you walk around and there's that place and it's just, I don't know what to think, you know, it's just, what the hell is this now, you know, it's incredible. <laughs> I was surprised uh, when Minoru Kinjo looked at my nose and he said, <laughs> it, it is similar to my nose, so you must be my brother. I, I feel th that I have a brother in, here in, in Japan and on this remote island. Uh, to tell you the truth, I was secretly hoping if he tell me stay here, <laughs> my brother. <laughs> I felt yes, I felt he is my elder brother. Uh, Maybe and you, they, and they and you, you and you and you and you know our artist. Something like this. And he wants yes, expression. Yes. So he expressed himself mm -hmm. this, uh, this uh, You are the you and the awards. Expression. Yeah, expression yeah. Weapon you have 
the word, yeah. the expression. That's yeah, right. Which is very strong. So let's go there. <laughs> <laughs>